So there's this wonderful story. Uh, wonderful probably isn't the right word. Uh, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin. They're in the lunar module. They've landed safely on the moon. So boom, they're there. They're there. They Okay, let's go. Well, they can't just open the door because inside the lunar module, they have air because they don't want to wear their big, giant, bulky spacesuits while they're trying to do this thing. Like, you know, push buttons and control levers and all that. So the lunar module is full of air and they're breathing it. Uh, no air on the moon, right? So, so first step, yeah, they can't just open the door. Their first step is they have to put on their big bulky spacesuits, which have their own life support systems, which have their own, you know, oh, w ways of allowing them to breathe and survive. And then they got to depressurize. They can't just do it quickly. Like they can't just like pop the hatch. Uh, it's, it's, that might damage some of the components from all the air just rushing out. So they have to do it slowly. And it's taken forever. I mean, they're just sitting there. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine their mental state? Like, okay, we made it to the moon. Clock's ticking. Can't stay here forever. Because there's only so much... Uh, you know, power and water in our life support systems. And they're just waiting. Like, just just standing there. Like, like you know, an awkward elevator ride that takes way too long. They're like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they were starting to get a little worried because if this didn't depressurize fast enough, then the mission would just be over and they may not actually be able to leave the moon. Like, so... Finally, after enough delay, Buzz Aldrin's like, you know what? I'm done. There is an emergency valve. Uh, they were worried, though, like, you know, if, if they dumped the air, that might cause some damage. But they felt like, OK, the, the air pressure had dropped low enough. That's probably safe. They did do the dump valve. Whew, everything was fine. They were able to go exploring the moon. They were so worried about vacuum because vacuum kills. And it kills in a really, really nasty way. If they had, if they didn't have their, their spacesuits on, if they were exposed to the vacuum of space on the moon, they wouldn't like blow up, but it's almost as bad. Uh, all their sweat immediately would evaporate and which can cause some damage. Like, you know, just there's like sweat and oils on your skin and you know, on your eyes and everything. And just goes away immediately. That can that can hurt. That can sting. You get something called edema. Edema is when the fluids near your skin, they're very, very close to that vacuum, expand. Because like, hey, look, there's no pressure out there. I want to go that way. So you do swell up. You don't blow up, but you do plump up to around twice your volume. Something like the Michelin Man or something. And uh, which is very irritating. This doesn't kill you, though. I, if, if you're returned to a pressurized environment, the edema goes away. Your sweat glands start producing sweat again. Like everything's OK. It might hurt for a while, but you're generally OK. What kills you is your own circulatory system. You lose all the air in your lungs, which, by the way, do not. Do not. If you're ever exposed to vacuum, don't hold your breath. You think, might think, oh, if I hold my breath, I'll have longer. No, because the problem is if you have a lung full of air up here and you close it tight with your throat and then there's no air pressure out here, all the air in here is want to go out there. And guess what? Your throat's not strong enough to hold it back. So it goes and it damages your lungs, damages your throat, and it kills you instantly, and you never recover. So, man, if you're exposed to vacuum, just let it go, man. Just let it go. That air is not coming back. So you've got lungs with absolutely no air in them, but your blood is still pumping, right? Your heart's still going. Your heart's like, everything's fine. Who cares? Still pumping blood. Your blood comes up to your lungs, expecting to pick up a load of oxygen. Doesn't get any, but doesn't stop. It just keeps going, keeps circulating. And your blood gets up to your brain, and your brain's like, hey, where's the oxygen? Your blood's like, oh, right, oxygen. Totally forgot. I meant to grab some, but there wasn't any at the lungs. Oh, well, see you later. And your brain's like, I'm going to take a nap because I need oxygen to do my thing. So you, it depends on the person. You've got like 10 to 20 seconds before you pass out. But still, you can be recovered. You can still be recovered. You can recover from this unless 
you don't have oxygen for around two or three minutes. After two or three minutes, then your other organs are like, hey, we need oxygen too, and we don't get the option of taking a nap, so we're just going to curl up and die. And all your organs dying means all of you dies, and you're dead. If you're exposed to vacuum, you've got 10 to 20 seconds of consciousness, and you've got two to three minutes of survival. And this is what Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong were facing. This is why they were so worried about that depressurization event.